What if the things that got you to where you are today are the same things that are keeping you from becoming that next and improved version of yourself? That is something I recently struggled with and I wanna share this with you guys so it doesn't hold you back from becoming the person you could be like it had been for me if I'm being completely honest. Now, if you watch any financial content, you're probably familiar with this. If you invest X dollars a month for 40 years, you can retire with a million dollars. And that seems great at first, but then you start to ask yourself a few things like, what if I don't wanna wait 40 years? Well, I wanna quickly teach you a retirement plan that I was following, and it's honestly a pretty good traditional retirement plan, but I'll teach it to you real quick, and then you can decide whether or not you wanna follow something like that, or if you wanna stop investing like I have decided to. And to be more specific, I have stopped investing in my brokerage account. But let's go to the whiteboard so I can explain more. Welcome to the whiteboard. I'm gonna be going over the retirement plan I had that honestly would have let me retire and at like 50. And then when I got to 59 and a half, I'd have a few million dollars depending on like how much I invested. And so this is sort of like a, a timeline. Um, this is my age, but you can kind of substitute the numbers with whatever your situation is, except for this one actually. This 59 and a half, this one has to be that way just because that's how retirement accounts work like 401ks and IRAs. They're just designed to be used in retirement. And if you use them before that age, most of the time you're penalized for it. And so I'm gonna to try to keep this simple, but let me know in the comments if there's something you don't understand or if there was something I missed. So this was this is the timeline, right? 59 and a half is when the retirement accounts like the 401ks, the IRAs, that's when they're designed to be used. They come with advantages for using them at this age. And if you use them before, you get penalized. You, you pay fees or you pay taxes in some situations when you would not have paid taxes if you had just waited. So to avoid that, you use a brokerage account and you want the money in your brokerage account to last you from 50 to 59 and a half when you would start using the traditional retirement accounts. And how do you know how much money you need in the retirement accounts, I, I would follow the 4% rule. So with a 4% rule, you multiply whatever you're gonna spend a year, let's say $40,000, and you multiply that by 25, and that's how much money you need, and that would be a million dollars, right? So you have a million dollars, and the 4% rule says you can safely withdraw 4% the first year, and then the years after that, you adjust uh, with inflation. It says that you're very likely to not run out of money, and so that's what the 4% rule is. You can look into that. It's really interesting. So that's that's what I'm still doing for retirement, but I'm not doing this anymore, and I'll tell you why. I'll, I'll show you this graph with compound interest. It's not to scale, right? But this is just to sort of give you an example. The way compound interest works is for a long time, most of that is, is you. So you make most of the money at the later years when you're a long-term investor, and that's the same for both of these. But because you make more money in the later years, if you're gonna you know retire early doing this approach, you're cutting out a lot of the money gains that you would be making. And that's that could be okay, right? Because the money only has to last, in this case, nine and a half years. And in this case, you, you wanna take a different approach because hopefully you live longer than, than nine and a half years after your retirement, <laughs> maybe. Depends on your life. So in this one, you don't have to have as much money because you know it could go to zero and then you switch to this one. But once you're here and you run out of money, you're, you're out of money. So now I'm gonna tell you why I stopped investing in my brokerage account. So within a couple of years, I will be at a point where I can stop investing completely in my retirement accounts and still have over a million dollars in retirement. And I'm in this position because I started early, I started investing a decent amount of money and I have the power of compound interest and time on my side. By the way, I am not going to completely stop investing in my retirement accounts, so it's likely that I'll have a few million dollars. So 60, 65 year old me, he's taken care of. Now I can give him a little bit better life and I can possibly retire a little bit earlier, like you saw in the example, but that's not necessarily what I want anymore. And I know some of you guys are in a similar situation. And I started really thinking about this when I was writing down my goals and one of my goals is to have $100,000 invested by the end of this year. I was running through my budget and the numbers and I saw, hey, I have an extra $300 that I can put into a brokerage account. And if you remember from my example, this would be the account that I would use at age 50 until about 59 and a half when I would start using my retirement account. So this was like a 
a bridge account, just to bridge that gap between early retirement and then when I could start using the retirement accounts. So I started running some numbers with a retirement calculator online and I was just trying to see how much $300 a month would be in 27 years when I was 50 and the results were shocking and not in a good way. Now, of course, this was just an estimate, but it was estimating that I'd have about $300,000. This got me thinking, do I not think I can make $300,000 within the next 27 years, if for the next 27 years, instead of putting that $300 into the brokerage account, I invested into myself. Now I had this thought because I have been listening to Ed Milet's podcast and he interviews these really successful people and they talk about their stories. And I was really inspired by how they were able to risk so much because of the belief they had in themselves and in what they were doing. And here I was thinking about putting $300 a month into this brokerage account because I didn't necessarily believe that I could get better returns if I invested it into myself instead. I'm willing to take the risk of not having those $300,000 when I'm 50 so that I could retire earlier. Because if I did that, I mean, yeah, I would retire earlier, but I would be full of regret because I didn't believe in myself. And I didn't take a chance to myself. I hope that made sense. And if it sounds a little crazy, trust me, I would have also thought it was crazy before I really started listening to these stories of these really successful people. And a big part of why I have this confidence is because like I mentioned earlier, I'm almost at the point where I could stop investing completely and the 60 year old me would still be okay. And this allows me to take more risks. But I only have this confidence because I took care of the financial basics first, which I talk about in this video. If you've made it this far in the video and you wanna know how I built that confidence in myself financially, you'll wanna watch that video.